Welcome back. In this video series, we're going to be building a full Spring Boot microservices based home energy tracker project. I'm going to show you different concepts related to microservices and how to implement them in Spring Boot. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, please also check out my previous microservices project. There are some very simple prerequisites to follow this course. You need to know a bit of Java object-oriented programming concepts, and a little bit of Spring Boot, and you're good to go. On screen, you can see a list of tools that you need to have pre-installed on your machine if you want to follow along. And over here, you can see some of the topics and concepts that I'm going to cover throughout this course. You will find the code you are building on GitHub, and each section will be labeled with a tag. That way, if you have some issues or if you just want to follow a particular section of this course, you can just check out that specific tag and you should be good to go. Please consider liking and subscribing as making this kind of content takes a lot of time and effort. Let's start. Because we are building a home energy tracker, we need to understand how appliances and their electrical usage works. So when you see what or the W, this is the power. So this indicates how much energy the device uses per second. For example, when you buy a hair dryer and it says 1200 watts, it means that that hair dryer uses 1.2 kilowatt of energy per second. Energy is defined by kilowatt per hour, so it's the energy used per hour. This is how much energy the device uses over a specific period of time, in this case over one hour. Then we've got something called the price per kilowatt hour. This is how much your utility company charges for each kilowatt hour used. So let's look at an example. Let's say we've got a hair dryer which uses 1.2 kilowatt of energy. One hour usage is going to be equal to 1.2 kilowatt multiplied by one hour. So this will give us 1.2 kilowatt per hour. If you wanted to calculate the usage for one minute, you simply take the power. So in this case, 1.2 kilowatt and you multiply it by one over 60. And that's because one minute is one sixtieth of one hour. And this is going to give us 0.02 kilowatt hours. Let's now assume that our energy provider charges us 30 pence per kilowatt hour. To calculate the cost for one hour of running this hair dryer, we can do one hour usage, which is 1.2 kilowatt hour times 0.30 kilowatt hour, which is the price. And this gives us the total price of running this appliance for one hour. And we can do the same for one minute. We simply take the one minute usage and we multiply by the cost. And this gives us the price we're going to pay for running one minute of that appliance. So I hope this little recap was useful because this is going to help us understand how to model this usage in our Java Spring Boot application. Let's now move on to designing our system before actually going and implementing it in Spring Boot. So we have some requirements. We want to track daily, hourly energy consumption per device or room. We want to view trends over time and we want to get alerts for any anomalies. For example, we want to be able to set thresholds and then once those thresholds are met, we want to get, for example, high consumption alerts sent to the users. We also want to receive AI power tips to reduce energy usage. We also want to be able to simulate or accept sensor data in real time into our microservice system. So here we have some assumptions that we're going to be using to do some calculations that are going to help us better understand what we need to build this whole home energy tracker system. So the assumption is that we're going to have 500,000 active monthly users and each user is going to have on average five devices. Each device is going to send one reading per minute. Each reading is going to be equal to one database insert. Let's start by calculating the total number of devices. So let's add it here. And that's going to be equal to 500,000 
times five, which is the average per user. So we're going to have 2.5 million devices in total. Let's calculate the number of readings per minute. So that's going to be equal to 2.5 million as that's the number of devices we got. And as we said, each device is going to send one reading per minute. So the readings are going to be incremental. This means that for each minute, a device is going to send you how much energy has been used in that specific minute. What we're going to be getting from the devices is the kilowatt uh, used in that specific period of time. And that will allow us to calculate the total usage. We are not really interested in price. That can be an addition we can do later. What we really care about is the actual usage, so the power consumption, which is the kilowatt hour used. So we got 2.5 readings per minute. Let's calculate the readings per day. And that's going to be equal to approximately 3.6 billion rows per day. Let's also do an estimate on the storage. Let's assume each reading is going to have an ID a device ID associated, kilowatts used, and a timestamp. So let's say each reading is going to be about 32 bytes. So, and that's going to be the size of each row. And because we've got 2.5 million devices, we are going to multiply this by 2.5, and that's going to give us the size per minute. To multiply the storage per day, we want to do 3.6 billion times 72. So storage required per day is going to be equal to 3.6 billion times 72 bytes. And that's equal to approximately 259 gigabytes per day. It's quite a lot of data, but there are databases that are going to allow us to store this much data. And the storage required per month is going to be equal to about eight terabytes. So we can apply some compression. So let's say we compress 50% of the data. We can get this down to four terabytes per month. Uh, let's also understand the right throughput. Let's assume each of the 2.5 million devices is going to send an insert per minute. So that's going to be equal to 2.5 million times 60. So this is the right throughput. This is going to be around 41.6 thousand inserts per second inside our storage. Let's assume 40,000. Uh, it's quite a big number to process per second, but the payload is relatively small. These are some of the calculations. So this is the load we want to support in our system. So let's start by designing the actual system diagram. Let's now draw a diagram with the various components of our home energy tracking system. So we're going to have a client. In this case, the client is a user that can do various operations on our system. A client is first going to go to an API gateway. API gateway is going to be the entry point inside our microservices system. Okay, now. We are going to have various microservices that are going to handle different parts of this home energy tracking system. So the first one is a devices microservice. So I'll call it device service. This device service is going to handle all the device creation, device management, and etc. And this data is going to be saved in a MySQL DB. So let's also have the database. This is a MySQL DB. Let's make it a bit smaller. Data is going to be stored in here from the device service. We are then going to have another service that is going to handle all the users. So we'll call it user service. And again, this data is going to be saved inside our MySQL DB. Then I would say the most important service in here is the usage service. So the usage service is going to handle all the input data and save it somewhere. We could maybe use MySQL, but I don't think it's fit for purpose. There are other databases that are better suited for this scenario, such as Timescale or InfluxDB, and these are called time series databases. 
We are going to look at this later and see what's the best one for our use case and we will implement it in our project. So usage service is going to be saving this data in the time series DB. But we need to be getting this data and as we saw we're going to be getting 40,000 uh, data points per second. So that's quite a lot. So we want to have some kind of queuing system before this usage service so that the system is not overwhelmed. And potentially what we can do is we can have a Kafka queue that actually gets the data from the API gateway. And then it sends this data to the usage service. And then the usage service can read from the Kafka queue once it gets capacity and then save it in the time series DB. I think this makes more sense, uh, but as we build our project, we can see if we find some better solutions. But for now, this is what we want. And also forgot API Gateway is going to forward requests to the user service and the device service. We've got another service, which is going to be the insight service. And this is the one that is going to liaise with AI. We said in the requirements that we want to receive AI power tips to reduce energy consumption. To do that, we're going to be using this inside service. And of course, this inside service will have to get usage data from the usage service. So these two are connected. The inside service will get data from the usage service and it's going to talk to an AI, which we'll see later how we want to run this. We've got IoT up here. So this represents all the 2.5 million devices. And these are going to be sending data to the API gateway. And then the API gateway will work as a proxy and proxy this data inside this Kafka queue. And the Kafka queue will then feed into the usage service. We've got our inside service that is connected to the usage service and a AI that we're going to be running on our machine most probably. The other requirement we had was an alerting system. So for that, we're going to have another separate service and we we'll call it alert service. This alert service is basically going to be triggered when a certain usage threshold is met. We could have potentially multiple alerts going out at the same time and this alert service could get overwhelmed. So for now, I think it would be good to have another Kafka topic in between the usage service and the alert service. What I'm thinking of is that the usage service is going to have some kind of schedule job that is going to run on a schedule and then check if a certain usage threshold has been met. And if that is the case, we want to send that trigger to the alert service who is then going to go to the user service, get the user email where we want to actually send the email. And then inside MySQL, we want to save for auditing purposes, the email that we have sent to the users. Okay, let's go over what we have just built and let's see if this makes sense. So we're going to have a client that is going to go through the API gateway and they will be calling various services in our microservices project. So the client will go through the API gateway and when we want to create new devices, we will go to the device service that will save its data in a MySQL table. We then have the user service that we're going to use to manage user preference and user data such as email and usage thresholds they might have set and etc. And this will be a table inside the MySQL database. So we then have the most important part of our whole system, which is the usage service. Okay, I see an issue here. I see that the API gateway is going to receive usage data from our devices. As we saw in the calculations, we're expecting about 2.5 million devices to send data to the API gateway that will then send it to the usage service. So in this case, the API gateway is going to be the producer of messages for the Kafka topics, which will be then picked up by the usage service. But this is not really good design. We don't want API gateway to be handling this kind of logic as if Kafka becomes slow, API gateway is also going to suffer. So what I'm thinking is let's move this down and let's create a new service up here. And we're going to call that 
ingestion service and that's just going to be a producer for our Kafka queue. This is going to receive data from the API gateway and then this data is going to go to the Kafka queue. I think this makes a bit more sense because of the load of our data. Also, generally speaking, API Gateway should just work as a proxy, not really as a producer of messages. Therefore, to keep this API Gateway lightweight, we are going to introduce a new service called Ingestion Service that will be producing messages for the Kafka topic, which will be then going to the usage service and the usage service is going to save it in a time series database. Let's now move on to the inside service. So the inside service will be called by the client to get insights on their usage and also get energy saving tips throughout an AI model. And finally, we have the alert service. So the plan is to have some kind of schedule in the usage service that is going to run every, let's say, few minutes. We don't know that yet. We'll see that later. If a certain threshold is met, let's say if the user has set a certain threshold and that threshold has already been exceeded, we want to put a message on this Kafka topic. So the usage service is also going to be a producer of Kafka messages. These will be then picked up by the alert service and the alert service is going to get the email of the user and then send out an email. And we're also going to save each email sent as a audit entry in an audit table we will create in this MySQL database. So I hope this makes sense. This is the initial version of the system we're going to be building. Let's keep this diagram on the side as we're going to be adding more features onto this diagram.